In the world of extreme sports, one figure stands out for defying all limits, even the laws of gravity. Dozens of medals, X game records, a BMX pioneer, and a tragic death that reshaped the world of sports. Dave Muir was an exceptional individual who even in death has contributed to the extreme sports community's understanding of health and safety. In this video, we won't just talk about his achievements. We'll explore Dave Muir's impact on the extreme sports community and the sporting world in general, a sports icon who inspired generations of BMX and sports enthusiasts. We're born to rise and we're excited to share Dave Mira's life story with you. Don't miss this unique look into the life of a legend. Are you ready? Dave Mira came into the world on April 4, 1974, taking his first steps in Chittanago, Northern New York. The time and place of his birth combined with his talent marked the path of one of the most successful and memorable careers in extreme sports. Growing in popularity from the 1970s, skateboarding became a favorite extreme sport for teenagers across the United States. With skateboarding established as the main extreme sport, BMX, a blend of cycling, motocross, and skateboarding took the stage. For Dave, it was love at first sight. From the beginning, he displayed extraordinary skills, combining agility, courage, and determination, becoming a fundamental part of a wave of teenagers propelling this new extreme sport. Dave was obsessed with BMX from the start, securing his first contact with Harrow Bikes BMX at just 13. Sponsorship deals with brands like Vision Streetwear, GT Bicycles, and Hoffman Bikes followed, all before he came of age. In the early 90s, he moved with his brother Tim to North Carolina, where he crossed paths with another BMX rider, Ryan Nyquist. Together they became professionals, attracting riders from all over the country to Greenville. It was just the beginning of a career full of successes and a lasting legacy. A legacy that we were close to losing. In 1993, a drunk driver hit him while he was on his bicycle. The result? A dislocated shoulder, a fractured skull, and a blood clot in the brain. Doctors advised him not to compete in sports, especially contact or high-risk sports. But Dave followed his path and, instead of listening to the doctors, he decided to follow his heart and destiny. Dave Mira's career had just begun. He was already a professional, but he wanted to show his abilities on his BMX to the world. His opportunity would come in 1995 at the first edition of the X Games. The X Games brought together a variety of extreme sports, offering substantial cash prizes to attract the best professionals in each discipline. Names like Matt Hoffman, Tony Hawk, or Chris Sen were some of the winners in that first edition. What happened to Dave Mira in his first participation in the X Games? We'll tell you next. Dave Mira grew up riding a bicycle. With a combination of passion, talent, and self-determination, he set out to become a professional in the world of BMX. And not only did he achieve that goal, but he became a legend. A significant part of the credit for this legend is due to his romance with the X Games, a story that cannot be understood without the figure of Dave Mira. The first edition took place in Rhode Island in 1995, where they presented the largest and most dangerous skate park the world had ever seen. Riders and professionals from various specialties launched themselves from giant ramps, soaring through the air while performing tricks. The goal? To execute the trick with the highest technical difficulty and risk. In a sport where winning depends on performing more extreme maneuvers than your rivals, it takes courage and extraordinary talent to stand out. How do you think Dave fared in his first X Games? We would love to say he took home the gold medal, but the reality is that he finished second in the BMX vert discipline behind Matt Hoffman. A failure? Not at all. Dave Mira's love affair with the X Games had only just begun. The following year, he returned and won the gold medal in the BMX street discipline. This would be the first of the 14 gold medals he would earn throughout his career, but Dave wanted more. Every year, he turned the X Games into his playground, becoming the BMX rider with more medals in the history of the X Games. Edition after edition, his legend grew, achieving successes, raising the bar every day, and triggering a complete revolution in the world of BMX. One of the most stellar moments of his career came in the year 2000, at the sixth edition of the X Games. That year, Dave became the first BMX rider to perform a double backflip, a maneuver involving two backward rotations in the air. Undoubtedly, one of the most remarkable moments in the history of BMX and the X Games. 
Another key moment in his career occurred in the year 2006. During a practice session for the X Games, after a big jump, he fell from a height of 16 feet, hitting his head and losing consciousness on impact. He broke all the ribs on the right side of his body, as well as injuring other bones and organs such as the sternum and liver. Despite experiencing numerous falls throughout his career, this was undoubtedly the most serious one. He spent four months away from the bicycle and, for the first time in over a decade, couldn't participate in the X Games. But we've already talked about how Dave was a guy with determination, and this injury didn't prevent him from returning to pursue his passion. In fact, this attitude towards life and his way to face these kinds of situations earned him the nickname Miracle Boy. He officially retired from BMX in the year 2011, boasting an unparalleled record, 24 medals, 14 of which were gold, and countless records that marked a golden era in the history of the X Games. It is undeniable that the life and career of Dave Mira are intertwined with the history of BMX and the X Games. Dave was a pioneer, a legend, an example to be followed by both his peers and rivals, as well as the younger generations of riders. And not only that, his contribution to the rise of extreme sports is indisputable. The X Games stars turned into brands, and names like Tony Hawk transcended television to lend their identity to the skateboarding game series for PlayStation. Following in Tony Hawk's footsteps, Dave Mira became the face of BMX video games with the release of Dave Mira Freestyle BMX. But his impact has reached far beyond, breaking barriers outside the realm of sports. More significant than his influence in bringing visibility to the world of BMX was his use of that public platform to shed light on extreme sports as sources of inspiration for younger generations. In addition to his commercial ventures aimed at promoting sports for young people, Dave also demonstrated a strong commitment to society by supporting numerous charitable organizations and initiatives. Dave always transcended mere sports, medals, or professional prestige. He wanted to turn his passion and influence into a platform to enhance charitable initiatives and create social impact, something that after his death, his family has made sure to remind the entire world of. The life of Dave Mira came to an end without prior warning on February 4, 2016. He was 41 years old. In these kinds of situations, it's impossible not to ask ourselves some questions. Dave Muir was a talented individual, an elite athlete with a life intertwined with success, effort, and excellence. What could have gone wrong for him to decide to end his life? On that day in Greenville, Dave Muir got into his car parked in front of his best friend's house. He took out a gun, aimed it at his head, and pulled the trigger, in broad daylight, without a suicide note or apparent explanation. His friends always saw him as a strong, focused person with a clear sense of purpose. They could never imagine something like this happening. His wife, however, had noticed a change in his mood in recent times. His family, concerned, felt powerless in the face of the situation, not understanding what was happening with Dave. He left no suicide note, but in the last months of his life, he left signals that no one could interpret. Because often, these signals are invisible until it's too late. The news shocked the sports world as they couldn't comprehend how someone like Dave could find themselves in such a desperate situation as to take their own life. He had fame, money, a family, and everything one could desire. Why would he do something like this? However, just like his life, Dave Mira's death was also inspirational. Thanks to him, mental health in sports and among elite athletes began to be taken seriously. Dave's family decided to use his death as a turning point for a situation that wasn't being talked about. Not only that, but they chose to donate his brain to science for research. Want to know what they discovered? Dave Mira had CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, a neurodegenerative disease caused by repeated head traumas or concussions, a disease common in boxers and American football players, among other contact sports. Those with CTE have a significantly higher suicide rate than the average person. He became the first athlete in the world of extreme sports to be diagnosed with CTE. After his death, the BMX community became more aware of mental health and safety. Following his death, safety protocols were established to prevent such incidents from happening again. Dave Mira not only elevated BMX during his active career, bringing visibility to millions of viewers, but also with his death, contributing to making BMX a safer sport for future generations. Dave Mira was a person with a special talent for sports. His X Games achievements elevated him as one of the greatest athletes in his field. 
However, once retired, he showed that his talent went beyond BMX. Want to know what he did when he retired from his lifelong sport? Dave Muir wasn't someone that you could expect to sit back and watch life go by. When he retired, he ventured into the world of rallies. He didn't make it so bad. He competed for several years with the Subaru team in the Global Rallycross Championship. But that's not all. He also tried his hand at triathlons. A year after his first triathlon, he participated in the Half Ironman World Championship in 2014. The following year, he aimed higher, as always in Dave's life, attempting to qualify for the Ironman World Championship in Kona, the mecca of Ironman. An Ironman involves swimming 2.4 miles, followed by a 112-mile bike ride and finishing with a 26.22-mile run. One of the toughest challenges in the world, not within everyone's reach. Due to his fame, he was offered a spot in the Kona World Championship without going through the qualifying stage. However, Dave had his way of doing things, choosing to qualify on his own merits. He didn't succeed in the qualifying race at Lake Placid. Three weeks later, he tried again, but his body had pushed to its limit and he couldn't finish the race, a frustration he took with him for the rest of his life. This is an example of who Dave was, a fighter who spent his entire life trying to be the best version of himself, giving his all and leaving a mark on everyone who crossed paths with. What Dave didn't know was that behind him he would leave a legacy, a mirror to look into, and an example as an athlete and as a person. We say goodbye for today, hoping you enjoyed this story about the life of an exceptional athlete and human being. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more inspiring stories like this. See you in the next video.